This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, I would like to share an unusual incident which can happen when you're using a BX pupil expansion device in a rigid pupil. And I would want to share this experience so that this can help many of the young body surgeons and there's a very simple hack to deal with it and let me share that. Now this is a 75 year old gentleman who has pseudo exfoliation and a non-dilating pupil and he has got a rigid pupil. Now, classically we are expected to stretch the pupil before using the expansion device but uh, of late I am avoiding pre-stretching because many of the times I can just squeeze in a ring. The disadvantage of doing a stretch beforehand would be that we can induce sphincter tears uh, which can be a little bit cosmetically unsightly in the post-op period so I am avoiding it. But the advantage of pre-stretching in a rigid pupil is that it makes the BX device engagement under the pupil margin very easy. So let us see what happens if we don't pre-stretch in this case. The incisions are made capsule stained with trip and blue and the OVD is placed in the antechamber. 2.8 millimeter limbal based incision is created. Time to place the BX device. It is placed on the surface of the iris. So as is customary, I prefer to use my side ports to engage the notches. The first two pairs of notches are engaged quite easily. So not at all an issue. Now is the time to engage the last pair of notches. The hands are switched. I need to go with my left hand to do that. Now we can see that something unusual is happening. I am unable to engage the notches on the pupil margin simply because the ring is too malleable and the tensile strength of the ring is too less for the rigidity of the pupil. So I thought maybe retracting the pupil with the second instrument will help to engage. Well, I was successful in engaging one notch but the second a remaining notch was not budging. In fact, the flange of the BX ring had turned vertical now. So it took a couple of more attempts for me to realize that this is a futile exercise which I am trying to do. So what is the easy solution? So if you, anybody can guess it, please write it down now. I'll pause the video. Okay, I assume that you wrote down your thoughts. The first thing to do is not to panic. This is not a big deal at all. We are not able to engage the last two pieces of notches simply because the pupil is too rigid for this thin device. So what we need to do is we need to do the stretch pupiloplasty at this stage itself. We can do it with the BX device on as well. There's no need to disengage the already engaged notches. Just going with my two Y hooks, engage. I'm pulling it in four directions. As I'm making the first pull, I can feel the pupil sphincter tear. The pupil now becomes bigger. I make the same stretch maneuver in 90 degrees away from the primary stretch which I've done. And now we have created some sphincter tears uh, which will make the iris more malleable and I'm hopeful that the remaining two notches of the BX device can be engaged successfully. And this is possible without using any second instrument at all. So now the all the six notches have engaged onto the pupillary margin. We have a decent opening of about five and a half millimeter. Time to perform the rexis. The moment I touch the capsule, you can see the wrinkling appearing from the site of puncture, suggesting zonular weakness. And as the caps are Rexus is being done. Please note the folds which are appearing just beside the tearing edge. Again, they are indicative of uh, anterior zonular weakness. The pupil expansion size gives a good idea to size a rexus. The rexus is around 5, 5.5 mm. That should be sufficient. A good hydrodissection is critical in eyes with uh, diffuse zonulopathy. This helps us to maneuver the nucleus without inducing any stress on the 
Zonius. Time to FACO. The superficial epinucleus is aspirated out. Time to perform the vertical chop. The tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus and I'm going to use a sharp vertical chopper to do the vertical chopping maneuver. The chopper goes in posteriorly first and then laterally. The two fragments are separated quite well. The first heminucleus is then subdivided into three smaller fragments. So once we have all the fragments, a time to do the quadrant removal. So I'm just taking out my side port instrument. I'm just trying to do it with one hand so that it can increase the followability. All the fragments are pulled out of the bag and then emulsified at the level of the iris plane. Now is the time to remove the epinucleus. The distal portion of the epinucleus could be removed. However, uh, the proximal half of the epinucleus still continues to be there and I am unable to hold it with my FACO probe and pull it out. So in such a situation, the first go-to maneuver is always going to be a repeat hydro procedure. We are hoping that by doing the hydro procedure, we are able to float up the subincisional epinucleus. But unfortunately, this does not work in this case. My next go-to alternative in such a situation is strip the cortex in the subincisional area. So by stripping the cortex, you have displaced the epinucleus more centrally. This gives us an easier access to lift it up using the irrigation cannula. The irrigation cannula goes underneath the epinuclear sheet and then just floats it up. So once it's much more anterior, we are going to come out and inject OVD to be placed behind the epinucleus sheet which is then pushed up. The epinucleus is then aspirated with the FACO probe quite easily. So why again FACO for the epinucleus? Simply because this epinucleus cannot be aspirated by the smaller bore of the INDA. So we need to switch back to the FACO tip and then it's aspirated in a jiffy. So this is a small tip how to deal with uh, epinucleus, especially the subincisional one which is refusing to be aspirated easily. Time to aspirate the cortex. One need to be mindful when doing cortex aspiration in these eyes with suspect zonular health is that avoid engaging the anterocapsule and trying to aspirate the cortex because we can induce localized zonular dehiscence. Since the gap bag is floppy, there's always a tendency of the anterocapsule and the postercapsule to get stuck in the aspiration port. One needs to be mindful of that. So during cortex aspiration, I did not notice any significant zonular weakness at this stage. So I did not put a CTR inside. The bag is inflated with OVD and the planned single piece hydrophobic lens is placed inside the bag. Time to explant the BHEX out. The notches are disengaged from the pupillary margin and then it is held with the forceps and pulled out. The OVD both in front and behind the lens is aspirated out. That's it, the case is done. To summarize, Two important uh, lessons to learn from this video. The number one would be when you're stuck with a rigid pupil and you're not pre-stretched and you're finding it difficult to engage the last two notches. Well, the solution is very simple. Put in OVD, go back and do the stretch maneuver. There would be some spring to tears that would ease off the iris and the pupil would become less rigid. And in this stage, it's easier for us to just go ahead and engage the last two notches so no need to panic on that front and secondly when we are stuck with an epinucleus which is not coming especially the sub incisional one the first go-to maneuver is going to be try to do some hydro procedure to float it up 
the goal is to bring the epinucleus towards the central safe zone for it to be aspirated the other trick is to just do a cortex stripping so by stripping the cortex you have displaced the epinucleus more centrally this gives us an easier access to lift it up using the irrigation cannula the irrigation cannula goes underneath the epinuclear sheet and then just floats it up and then with viscoelastic you can just push the epinuclear and displace it more centrally where it is accessible to be aspirated easily by the phaco tip so that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful